Hello, Andrew here from the Glazer Tutoring Company. Today I would like to teach you how to find the dimensions of a box. So here's the following problem. It says the length is going to be twice as long as the width. The height is going to be two inches greater than the width. And they tell us that the volume is going to be 192 cubic inches. So first thing is just kind of take it sentence by sentence. So it says the length is twice as long as the width. So let's just say you call the width W. Well, if you call the width W, then what does the length have to be? It has to be twice that, so 2w. Fair enough. Then it says the height is going to be 2 inches greater than the width. Well, if the width is w, and you know the height here is going to be 2 inches greater, then simply take the measure of the width and add 2 to it. So now we have all of the dimensions of the box labeled. Now it also tells us that the volume of the box is 192 cubic inches. So that's fine. I mean, you can write that over here, that the volume is going to be equal to 192 192 inches cubed. For our calculations, I'm just going to drop the units just so that we can deal with the numbers. Now, what we need to do is we need to know a relationship then between the volume and the dimensions of a box. So what is that relationship? Well, the volume of a box is going to be equal to the length times the width times the height. So I have a math equation now. Remember, the volume is going to be 192 inches, and that's equal to the length, which we call 2w, the width, which we call w, and the height, which we said is going to be w plus 2. Now, our job here is going to be to solve this. All right, that's going to be our job. So, now this is a little bit complicated. What I'm going to do here is I, I want to try and, you know, distribute these terms together. I want to see what I'm dealing with, probably a cubic function. All right, and let's see what, what we're working with. So, we got 2w times w. So, that's going to be simply 2w squared. All right, and then multiply that now by the w plus 2. So that's going to be 192 is going to be equal to 2w squared times w, which is going to be 2w cubed. And then 2w squared times 2 is going to be 4w squared. And now what I know is I'm like, all right, well, you know, this I'm thinking about algebra, and I'm like, I have no idea how to solve this. So what I want to do is set this thing equal to zero, right? Because remember, what we can do is if we set this equal to zero, meaning subtract the 192 from the left to the right, then what we're left with is we're left with 2w cubed plus 4w squared minus 192 is going to be equal to zero. So what I really want to find is I want to find the values of w when I plug it in that this whole side is going to be equal to zero. Now we can do this with a calculator, all right, or we can do this um, by means of maybe a rational value uh, theorem, all right, um, or sh I should say rational zero theorem. First, let me use the calculator because it's just so much easier. So if you plug in the function into the calculator, I've already done it, just hit graph, all right, make sure your zoom is on standard. Okay, it's so number six, so it'd be easy to see. And where you know you may notice now that the graph crosses that x-axis, right? And this is really kind of in our problem, that's the w axis. All right. Um, you notice it crossed the x-axis x-axis basically right at four. All right. Now, how can we make sure that is four? Well, you can go to second trace, which meaning you uh, are going to operate the calc function. Go down, go to zero, hit enter. Now what you're going to do is you're going to move your target to the left bound or the left of the intersection point. So you know that this point here is roughly going to be 4. So just leave it to the left of 4, meaning less than 4. So 3, hit enter. Then move it to the right of 4. So go somewhere over there. I don't know. And then it says to guess, meaning try to get it just close enough. So 4.09 is going to be close enough. Hit enter. And look, it calculates it for you. X is going to be 4. And the y value or the function's value is zero. So what that means now is we use the calculator and we said that w is going to be equal to four. Now you can check that. If you want, take four, plug it on in for each of the w's and see if this thing is zero. And it will be. All right. Now that's the way to use the calculator. If you don't have a calculator handy, the other way to do it, um, which is a lot longer, but the other way to do it is to use the rational zero theorem. And what we can do is you're going to, uh, first, I'm going to reduce this, okay? I'm going to reduce this. I realize that I have a common factor of two in each of the terms. So that'll just make our life a little bit easier. So that's going to be w cubed plus 2w squared minus then, uh, what's that, 96, I think. All right. Now let's use the rational zero theorem. 
So it says we can factor, we can find the factors of the constant term. We can call those factors P. We can then find the factors of the leading coefficient, which is the coefficient of the greatest X value, which now is a one, call them Q. And we can take those factors P, divide them by the factors Q, and this will give us a list, a list of possibilities, of possible rational zeros, okay, for the function. So what we do now is, I'll move this up here, and what we're going to do is list out the factors of 96, right? So you're going to say, I'm not going to go too crazy here, but you're going to do 1, and then you say, okay, what whole number is not 19? I don't know what the, where that came from. Uh, but you're going to take 1 and multiply it by 96, right? These are whole numbers that multiply to each other to give you a 96. Now, both plus and minus, okay? Anytime you write out your factors, they're going to be both plus and minus, okay? Then you might say, well, could I have chosen a value of 2, and 2 times what will give us 96? Well, that should be then 48, right? 2 times 48 is going to give us 96. Okay, so that's another one. And now you got to keep on going, all right? You're going to keep on going, and you're going to say, okay, well, how about, how about now 4, right? If I take 4 and I, oops, and I multiply it by what? Maybe 24, I think? Let's just double check. Let's double check. 24 times 4. Oh, good. Okay. All right, cool. Now you would keep going. Okay. But I'm not going to keep going at this point because we already have our answer here. So you're going to take those factors, whatever, you know, dot, 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 dot. There's going to be several more and divided by then the factors of the, of the leading coefficient, which is just one. So you just have plus and minus one. Now what you have is you have a list. So you have plus and minus one divided by plus and minus one. That's going to be one possible rational zero, then you're going to take plus and minus two divided by plus and minus one, plus and minus four divided by plus and minus one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way out to plus and uh, minus 96. Now, you're going to have a bunch of possibilities, okay? Now, this is going to, and what you'd have to do is you'd have to test each of those values. But the one I'm going to just highlight, because we already know the answer, the one I'm going to highlight here is going to be the plus minus four over the plus minus one. Now, this could work out to be either positive four or negative four, right? Depending upon which values you choose. Now we already know that the value should be four. Okay, that's the idea. This rational zero theorem gives us a list of possibilities. Maybe one of them will work, maybe none will work. I mean, it all depends, okay? But that's how you would have done it without a calculator. So all you would have done was listed out all those possibilities, taken this value then, a four or one or two or negative two or positive 96, and you're going to plug them in. And you're going to see which one gives you zero. The only one that's going to do it is positive four. Okay. Hopefully you can use a calculator in this because uh, if you're not, well, as they say in the movie Taken, good luck. So great movie, by the way, my goodness. Um, so now that we know the width is going to be 4. Now you know the dimensions, right? So this is going to be 4. The width is 4. The length, again, you plug in 4 for the width. So the whole length should be then 8. And the height is then going to be a total of 6. So you've got length is 8, width is 4, height is 6. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I do hope this helps. If you found this video valuable, if you don't mind liking, subscribing, maybe even telling some of your classmates about our channel, I'd love to keep producing more videos. We've got thousands out there. And we're going to keep going. All right. Um, by the way, if you're taking chemistry or physics, we got your back covered there. So we've got thousands of solved solutions. Check out our channel, Glazer Tuning Company. See you soon.